one of the challenges is that the most common mutation that we currently see is actually one for which we don't have a great targeted therapy. This is a KRAS mutation. RAS is very important inside the cell. We talk a lot about receptor tyrosine kinase inhibitors. A number of receptor tyrosine kinases like EGFR and others turn on RAS. And through RAS, there's a signaling pathway that helps cells avoid cell death, helps them produce more proteins, helps them invade, and helps them grow. So these are all pathways that cancers are very interested in promoting. Classically, this is seen in people with adenocarcinoma. Often it's seen in people who smoke, although these mutations can be seen in people who don't smoke. And classically, this is thought to be a mutation that's associated with not responding to EGFR inhibitors, and there's been a lot of controversy about the value of chemotherapy, although chemo is a standard, including in people with KRAS mutation positive disease. And of course, there's not just one KRAS mutation, there are a number, but it's certainly a very large group of people that we see and one in which we've been desperate to make progress. So this past year, Dr. Passiana at ASCO reviewed some of the data that are out there looking at KRAS mutation positive disease, and there's a new class of drugs called MEK inhibitors. MEK is downstream. MEK is one of the steps in the pathway after you turn on RAS signaling. So if you block this pathway, you may be able to cut off all of these things, cell growth, invasion, and the ability of cancer cells to avoid being killed off. Now, there's certainly been some initial exciting activity, some people with responses in very small numbers that's been presented already, and other drugs as well. This is one from AstraZeneca called selumetinib, where we treated people with chemotherapy, docetaxel in this particular instance, and we added selumetinib in half of people or this MEK inhibitor. And what we found was that adding selumetinib in people with KRAS positive lung cancer to chemotherapy really made a big difference in a small study, which was a phase two randomized study. So the response rate was 37% compared to zero, and that's with chemotherapy alone. It's a bit lower than we normally see, but still there's a clear signal here that there's something great happening. People had a longer time to cancer growth, and perhaps even a signal here, this is the survival for people who had the combination maybe even better overall survival here for people that get the MEK inhibitor added to their chemotherapy. So this is a small, early-stage trial, but I think there's very clear promise here for MEK inhibitors in people with KRAS-positive lung cancer. We're hoping to see more information about that this year, and it's quite likely that this drug doesn't just work in KRAS-positive lung cancer. It probably works in other types of cancer as well. This is one of my patients who was on a clinical trial. She's a young woman. She did have a smoking history. She was found to have a KRAS mutation when we profiled her cancer. And she came to me from another center out of town. She'd previously been treated with a Lymta or Pamitraxed. I put her on a trial that allowed me to just add the MEK inhibitor but keep her going on her Lymta. And this is really interesting. This is her chest X-ray. And we're looking at her backwards here. This is her left side. This is her right side. And these round spots here, these are all spots of cancer. And you can see that even within a month and a half, there's very dramatic shrinkage. So the chemo had stopped working at this point, but when we added this inhibitor, we saw a restoration of the chemo's activity and some activity with the addition of the MEK inhibitor. So this is very exciting. It's just research at this point, but it's very exciting, and there are a number of different trials out there. So I think if you've got a KRAS mutation, I would look for some trials. This is certainly one of our promising avenues forward, and hopefully this will be followed by more in 2013. Thanks for listening. If you like and learn from our Grace Casts, you can subscribe on iTunes by just searching for the term Cancer Grace, find podcasts in the subject you want, pick a format of audio or video, and then just click subscribe. It's that easy. And for those of you who don't want to miss any of our programs, there's even a feed for all subjects. You can also find us on YouTube at Grace for Cancer Info, and that's the number four in one word, Grace for Cancer Info. Finally, if you haven't been there yet, please check out our Grace website at www.cancergrace.org. And don't forget that donate button in the upper right. Our content, which helps tens of thousands of cancer patients around the world every month, is made possible by your support.